Chicas, today is going to be an absolutely revolutionary video, at least as far as my channel is concerned. I've never done what I'm going to do today, but I really do hope that you're going to like what you see. And in order to test out this new method of mine, we are going to fall back onto our most dreaded slash loved uh, topic, and that is going to be none other than calculation, visualization, the whole shebang. And last time uh, I got at least one comment where uh, I was told that I did nothing in spite of uh, what I said in the title or in the video about calculating. Anyway, I don't want to go there. But today I'm really, really hardcore. I'm going to get into the nitty gritty and I'm actually going to really, just like last time, offer you some practical advice. So, position on the board comes from a student's game who is playing with the black pieces. He is rated about 11, actually exactly 1170 at the time of playing uh, USCF. And uh, I really want you to, for you to be in his head for this whole entire exercise. So this is not going to be an inside my head. It's going to be pretty much an inside your head type of scenario. So the first thing I want you to do is to have a look at how he perceives this position. And perhaps we can already talk about what's on the board. So what's on the board is a complex position as far as number of captures and possibilities are concerned. Although the more we look at it, the more we realize that this position is actually very, very simple. Nonetheless, I want you to have a look at what he said after the game, how he felt in this position. That's what this is going to look like. And technically, I'm going to try to solve this as smoothly as possible. I think I did reasonably well. He says his comment about the position. Once again, my head is having a hard time with calculating all the captures and various orders and taking into account a potential pin excuse me, and tactics off of that. So that's already a mouthful and a handful to read. And I do think that we already are on the wrong mentality slash mindset in that A, we are already fabricating excuses as to why we are not engaging with the position in the appropriate manner. And two, we try to make it look like, we're trying to make it look like it's some incredibly complex story that we just can't really get to the bottom of it. And uh, I really hope that you are going to appreciate my little work here. For once, I try to give you a visual of what I think, because I have been in these shoes, of course I have, what it looks like, feels like to be in here in this position when you are absolutely clueless and you feel like you just don't know where to go. And roughly, I came up with this. And I think that this is, of course, it is funny, but it sort of does give up, does give justice to what is going on. If you actually have a look at the things that I wrote up and put on this uh, in this image, the royal mess, there's so many motives. He did say that the pins, the the move orders, the tactics. This is too hard. I wish I was Hikaru. Uh, I hope I fed the cat before I left home. And that, you know, it sounds like I'm ridiculing the person, but not at all. This is like, we are not machines. This happens. Like when we are in the game, so many things impacting what's up here. Like, why is the floorboard creaky? Why does that guy cough so much? Why does he always do that when it's my turn? Um, once again, I wish I could calculate like Hikaru. Okay, let's give it a go. So after rookie one, Rookie one. Oh yeah, they have knight d5 there too. I need to take care of that too. Okay, so rookie one. Let's go rookie one. Knight takes f4. Um, knight e7 check maybe. My queen is p there. Ooh. Oh man, this. Th oh man. Nah, can't do. And that is how. One example, obviously I'm not claiming that I've found, you know, the Philosopher's Stone, but that is an easy way for this to derail, to show you the board what I was talking about, just so that we have the connection between the Royal Mess image and the board. So I was talking about the position after Rookie 1, Rookie 1, Knight F4, Knight E7. I shouldn't have played it out, by the way, but I did. And uh, that's like a panic moment. Ooh, this is on, check, whoa, duh, not cool. So, and then once someone sees a line like this, and then on top of that, they have all that mess that I just 
offered your visual for thinking that oh my god and i haven't calculated still if they take back here or if they take d5 first uh nah can't do and so we are completely dodging the calculation it's not taking place it's whatever is taking place is inaccurate insufficient unfinished and so on by the way just for historical uh relevance or accuracy i'm going to show you that the game continued with take take rookie eight take 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 knight f4 queen b8 and a roughly equal position occurred which eventually by the way we ended up winning now what is that we can do here that is going to help us to avoid this chaos that was represented by the image i showed you and instead what we should be doing and in order to model this i'm also offering a visual very unlike me by the way so we are going to jump back to here and we are going to do book, delete all of that and we are going to type up our keyword for this whole entire lesson which is going to be none other than this beautiful word called clarity this is what you want to have in your head all the time, every time when you are calculating and evaluating variations, right? And I really want you to try to picture what I'm showing you. I purposely designed this video for this, and I do think that it genuinely has merit. This is what I want in your head and none of this. And if you are telling me that you never have this in your head, then pff, heads off to you. But I, pff, yeah, I have questions and uh, I have doubts because most of us do end up with something like this sooner or later. Um, so we need to attempt to give this a red hot erase and go to this. And the first thing that you are going to do, and I'm going to have to switch a little bit um, to and fro between what I'm typing and what I'm going to show you on the board, but unfortunately it's a necessary evil, is that we are going to do rook takes e1. This is the move that we think is best. Um, let me shrink this guy a little bit so that we will have plenty of room for writing because we will need it. We go back to the chessboard and we do this. So, and I'm going to arrow it only for you now. I'm not going to um, play out the moves because I would like to model a little bit the thinking. So my line goes like this. And if you feel that you just don't know where to start, then apparently it doesn't matter where you start. Just make a start. Do not do what I exactly did, which was a really semi attempt at trying to give it a go and then already mixing in lines and giving up and all pins all this now pick a line go through it so this is my line that i'm picking rook takes e1 rook takes e1 knight takes f4 97 check that's exactly the one that i picked for him by the way and i purposely did this so i am gonna calculate this Right, and so I'm going to pursue that line as far as I can, and I'm going to come to a definitive conclusion on that line. And from there on out, that line is going to be my starting point, the ultimate foundation uh, of the building, you can call it the thinking tree following... Uh, Kotov's book, but I don't think it's necessary to theorize that much. So I'm going rook e1, rook e1, knight f4, knight e7, check, king e7 on the move because I need to guard my queen that is under attack. And I don't see a move for white. Like, I, they can trade queens, I can take back, but I'm a piece up. Remember, I took the rook, they took back, I took the knight, and they didn't take back. I'm a knight up. King f8... No checks other than capturing here on IG6, which is hanging for free. No threats. I'm completely winning. Now, part of the problem, and I do understand this, is that already this calculation is too difficult. It, it is. I accept that. And once again, that is where this video is going to fall short for some, perhaps many. You need to practice it. Because in the end of the day... All this line was a capture, followed by a recapture, followed by a capture, followed by a check, followed by a move out of check, conclusion. 
You can argue that this is difficult. My counter argument is, is that nothing is ever going to be easier in chess than calculating a forcing sequence of I take, they take, I take, they check, I move over. It's not going to get easier. It is what it is. We have to accept it. Now I'm going to play it out. So I will show you knight f4. Oh, sorry. I was going to go rook takes, takes, knight takes, knight e7, king f8. And I concluded that this is a win. Super important. So what I do is that I write this variation down. Uh, rook takes e1, knight takes f4, um, knight e7, check, king f8. Eight minus plus for the old school guys. Black is winning, right? And now this is going to be the 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 go to uh, like our drawing board, if you will, because now we need to uncover. Oh, sorry, wrong layout. This is what it looks like. Um, now we need to uncover the rest. But again, you shouldn't be discouraged. You should at this point feel like you have done the first and most important step in a Sherlock Holmesian uncovering of the truth because you have found one piece of truth already. And if you manage to um, uncover the rest and figure out the other lines and their values, the mystery is solved. So now once again, we go back to the board, the chess board, not the drawing board, and we go like, okay, so in this variation, uh, after rook e1, um, what if after rook takes e1, knight takes f4, they take on f7? And by the way, in this regard, there are two techniques that you can do. So you do a long line, and there are multiple avenues in the line where your opponent has different potential answers. You can either st start at the very back, or you can start in the front. In this case, it doesn't matter. When you try to disprove something, you always start on the far end and work backwards because that's where usually the mistakes are made. The further deep you go, the more likely that you misvisualize there. But here, when we need to methodically eliminate every possible line that is potentially dangerous from the opponent, you can start either end. I'm going to start at the beginning. So after rook takes, rook takes, um, we can uh, simply just go to... Uh, Actually, even after rook takes, you can look at knight d5. Yeah, let's do that. So instead of rook e1, rook takes e1, there is knight takes d5. So in your brain, now you go like, right. So that's what it's going to look like on our drawing board. Instead of rook e1, there will be a line where on the second move, instead of rook e1, they are going to play uh, knight takes d5. I'm going to put that there. I don't know how to delete that thing. Wait a second. Let me just do... Actually, no, I will just do this. Um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, I can't do that. I didn't practice this too much. So anyway, we will go with uh, rook takes e1. And then on the second move, white plays knight takes d5. All right? And so now I need to figure out what to do against it. I will put another two here just to be clear. Right? So now I go back and calculate. So I go rook e1, knight takes d5. If rook takes d1, knight e7 check. And that pin on the queen means that when the queen goes, I lose the queen. Not good. Line finished, concluded. I'm not going to write it down, but I will tell you why. Because I immediately see that after rook e1, knight d5, I can very simply just take back on d5. They are now forced to take my rock, and I take the knight, and I'm a piece up. Another line finished, another line concluded with an evaluation. Let's go back to the drawing board. Uh, knight takes d5, c takes d5, rook takes e1, and queen takes g6, and black is winning again. In case you didn't know, this minus plus means... Black is winning, um, and plus minus means white is winning. Great! We are, we are on the right track. Let's go back to the board, and let's see what other lines are there. Rook e1, so we have dealt with knight d5. So now we are going to deal with rook e1, knight takes f4. Now in my initial attempt, we dealt with knight e7. That's the main line, our 
go to line. So now we are going to replace that with rook e1, rook e1, knight f4. And instead of knight e7 check, what happens if knight takes f4? Well, in that case, I can take the queen, they take back. And now it feels like rook e7 is a threat with penetrating on the 7th rank. So I'm going to cancel that out by king f7. The rook's penetration has been denied. White has got three isolated pawns. With other words, a completely wrecked pawn structure in an endgame. Black is clearly better. Now you may observe that this is a different evaluation from the previous one, which was black wins, black wins. No, this one is just black is clearly better. That's good enough. I'm black. So I'm going to once again Make sure that that line, oopsies, is no longer a loose end. So what that line said was uh, rook e1, rook e1, knight f4. And then third move, knight takes f4. It should be neater in your case. Lucky I called it clarity. But nonetheless, this is t totally fine. Queen takes b3. Uh, a takes b3 and king f7 i'm humbly going to give an exclamation mark to this uh indicating that that was necessary to stop the rook penetration and this is what we call equals plus when black is clearly better and so now again let's go back to the board i think potentially for the last time what else did we not calculate rook e1 with that with knight d5 so that's done rook takes e1 knight f4 we played knight f4 oh there is queen f7 in between Okay, what do I do? King takes. That already I take note that that's good news because now they are forcing my king to come out. So it's going to be great. Knight f4 back now. So I don't have to worry about coming to f7. So now the isolated pawn is already a target. I'm going to play rook d8. And I conclude that in comparison to the previous line, the white pawn structure is not as damaged. But now I immediately manage to jump onto the isolated pawn. And I'm definitely looking to play a better endgame. Pawn weakness, more active king, more active rook. Black is slightly better. Let's do that too. And this, by the way, is your final line. When you've done all this, you check, you execute. And so let's go back to Mr. Clarity. The last variation looks like this. Third... Uh, Queen takes f7 check instead of taking back on f4 uh, check check I said king takes f7 knight takes f4 and rook d8 and again the position is slightly better for black and this is what I want you to picture that this is in your head lines evaluations move on other line, another evaluation, another line, another evaluation. And ultimately, ultimately what you want to do is something along the lines of, and therefore my move is rook takes e1. Because I'm really typing up everything that goes through our head. So I, conquer, I calculated these lines. I drew the conclusions. The conclusions are coherent. I am winning, I'm winning, I'm better, I'm better. By coherent, I mean that I am coming out on top in every line. Good to go. And I covered every single line I had to, all bases covered. Now, even as I did it with the jumping to and fro, perhaps it looked a little bit messy. But in reality, if you calculate the lines with me now one by one again, you will see that it's actually very simple. Rookie one. We looked at knight d5, pawn takes back, rook takes back, queen g6. Piece up. Done. Rook e1, rook e1. Knight takes f4. Now there is knight capture, but there is also a check. Let's have a look at the check. White sacrifices a piece by not taking back on f4. I go king f8. They've got nothing. I'll conclude that. That's game over. I'm a piece up. Done. Okay, back to the beginning. Rook e1, rook e1, knight f4. If they don't go check, they can take me back. If they take me back, I take queen, they take back, I play king f7 to deny rook e7, done. Another line calculated and evaluated. Finally, rook takes, rook takes, knight takes, they take the queen first, check, I take back, knight then retakes on f4, rook d8, and another line is done. And so the biggest contrast that you can see between the two super chaotic, uh, the, sorry, the one image that is super chaotic, 
hello. And the one that is extremely clear is, is that with the extremely clear one, I picked a line, I pursued it as far as I could, I then evaluated it, and I then started to use that line as my starting point, a reference point, and I built the rest of the variation around it. Once again, if you are a very big fan of the Koto of Three story, I'm not, you can use that to some degree. I guess I've recreated that, but I think in a far more digestible fashion. And you just check where your opponents can do different moves and you just single them out one by one. And again, just choose a method. It doesn't matter what that is. Just choose one. You can start from the beginning. You can start on the tail end of choosing where white can play different variations. And as long as you calculate, evaluate, and then make a decision, you are already killing it in terms of the um, calculation um, department. And people get really upset when I say, uh, the best thing you can do in order to improve your calculation is to do more calculation. Well, funnily enough, that's exactly what I did here with essentially not using much more of a skill set than the students, except that I was just willing to embrace the work and I was willing to embrace what looked like this. Chaos, uncertainty, various conflicting thoughts, all of that just erase find a certain point, something that reminds me of clarity or you rather, and stick with that and then try to iron out the wrinkles rather than just spare, stare at them and go like, oh, too hard, can't do, whatever. I love this image, by the way. It's so cool. So this is one of the techniques that I very highly recommend you, especially if you feel that there is an overwhelming amount of lines to be calculated. By the way, you almost certainly will find that what you consider to be an overwhelming amount of variations, motives, ideas is actually very manageable. When I did go through this game with the student, he was absolutely gobsmacked about how simple it was when we did exactly what I did, just did with you, which was that we calculated all the lines. He did it, not me. And then we evaluated and we went like, okay, move on. Okay, move on. Okay, move on. Okay, conclusion done. What was so hard? Oh, I don't know. And that was exactly the conversation. So once there is a little bit of method to this concept, I purposely didn't use the word madness, you are good to go, guys. So one of the biggest issue is to embrace that you will have to go down in the jungle. And of course, it is never going to be as clear as going from this to this. That would be too nice. No one said ever, by the way, the chess was easy, or if they did, they lied to you. But the concept is, is that the more you do this, the more clarity you are going to get and the better you're going to get at calculation. And I love this image too so much that I'm going to leave this up on the board. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to just say goodbye while this is on. I know that this was a little bit different from what I usually do. Um, I wanted to showcase my incredible artistic flair, but on a more serious note, I just wanted to show you that Sometimes I think visual cues and if you have, if you watch this video and then you play a, a, a game a month later and you remember the chaos and you remember the image of clarity, your brain hopefully is immediately going to demand, demand of you that I want the mess, man. Give me the clear because naturally no one feels comfortable in this state of mind. The problem is that you can then make two choices. One is can't do too hard or push yourself into, now I want to get rid of with the mess and I want to replace the mess with clarity. Clarity, folks, that's what you want. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Don't forget to sub to like the comment and I will be back with the next soon. Bye.